Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Jason Mackey's First 10. Quick hit podcast gets you ready for the day. Today is Friday, and we're going to do a little uh, by request. I have a bunch of questions here that I asked on Twitter. Um, there are a lot of pirates, um, so if I could make any request, it's to maybe diversify a little bit. I know you guys follow the Steelers, follow the Penguins. They're not exactly as interesting as the Pirates right now, at least not because they're in season, but uh, maybe we could spread it around a little bit. But either way, I have a bunch of questions, some Pirate stuff we'll get to. First, want to remind you that we're sponsored by the North Shore Tavern. You don't have to be a baseball fan to love it there. The interior is wall-to-wall Pirates. They're appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and of course, steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone open every day across from PNC Park. The North Shore Tavern is Pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone. So again, thank you for the questions. I'm certainly not complaining, just saying let's uh, try to focus on some other sports a little bit. John Taylor at WV Pirate asks how much have the Pirates missed Ryan Barucki in the bullpen? Already might start throwing soon. Any news on Burroughs? What kind of future does Nunez have with the Pirates at first? So, okay, let me back up and get the Barucki thing. I, I do think Barucki is a pretty big loss this season. And maybe we've underplayed that. Um, I I do think that he was doing a plyo ball routine with Marco Gonzalez. And that's generally the last step before he starts to throw. We do not, at least to my knowledge, have confirmation that he has been throwing, but yes, it should be very soon, maybe in the next week if he hasn't already. Um, But as far as his loss, one of the things that Baraki did really well that they've been missing is that fireman role, come in with guys on base, get out of it, Baraki last year had some really good swing and miss stuff. He was able to channel that. And then just with Chapman's struggles, it would be really nice to have another lefty out there. Um, no real news on Burroughs. He's supposed to be, you know, a month after the All-Star break, something like that. So, I mean, it's not imminent by any stretch. And Malcolm Nunez, I I don't know. He's been playing more third base. He lost some weight. I'm not sure where I see him fitting at this point. I mean, they have a bunch of other avenues to go. I'd look at you know, maybe Jake Lamb, you want to give him a try there. Um, if you have Key Brian, Nick Gonzalez, you're trying to play Jared Triolo, maybe he's an option there. Um, not really sure, but I Malcolm Nunez has to do more to get his to get get a chance there, I should say. Michael Manorino asks the question: uh, what will it take for Ben Sharon to trade a prospect for hitting help? Um, uh, I got this a few times from people on here about when are they gonna, you know, show urgency, go for it, whatever. Um I don't think it's yet. I understand the sentiment. Uh, I'm not in a hurry for them to trade prospects, but I do understand the idea of helping the offense, and I think it could need help. I think you could also – I think we're, we're maybe thinking a little bit too much about the hitting and not enough about the bullpen. I might entertain that discussion just as much or if not more. But I think you need to know what you have in Key Brian at this point, and, and I'm not sure you do. Um, I want to see what happens with Nick Gonzalez. I want to see – You know, Connor Joe is a piece of their equation at first base. I'm not sure if he's the whole piece, if there's a Rowdy Telez angle there, if somebody else, you know, I I understand people are probably going to yell and say Telez is no part of it. I get it, but they paid him 3.2 million bucks. And so they're probably, you would think, uh, based on their actions, going to see, you know, what what is there. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. I've been on this podcast, another one saying, I don't quite understand what they're doing, but at this point, if you're going to put their actions together, um, they're not turning the page anyway. So I say all that to say, I think there's just, you need to learn a little bit more before you do that, but I don't, I don't think they would be against that. I don't see how they could be. Is Andy the future a catcher? If so, where does that land Davis or vice versa? That's Charles Podboy um, at CPOD 11 QP. Uh, It's a good question. And I don't think we know until Andy comes back from his elbow injury. I think it also depends on how Henry hits. Um, You could see them deployed as a catching tandem. I think that might make sense on some levels. It also might make sense to just make Endy a first baseman. If he's hitting and has elbow problems coming back, if Henry handles himself defensively, which in Henry's defense, he did early on this season. His his issues were with the bat, not defensively. He was just fine back there. So, again, sorry to give a, a terrible answer, but I think we just need more time. Um, Carmine Leguzio, uh, thoughts on this team actually being competitive and pushing for a wild card spot. If they're around 500 at the deadline, do they make any moves? Again, I think this is possible. I had said at the beginning of the season, 83, 84 wins. I don't feel compelled to move off of that. Um, I didn't expect this much from Gerald Jones. I don't think many did. I did expect Skeens to be up here, uh, when he is and contributing. Um, but the fact that the rotation is so good, I mean, that's, that, that's what, leads me to believe you can't just fritter that away. 
And I think the bullpen can be good. Maybe I'm crazy for thinking that, but like I do think David Bednar can round into a pretty decent form. Colin Holderman has been excellent. Uh, they need to figure out a couple pieces back there, but I still think the bullpen can be good. You've checked those boxes. Sorry, bad, bad analogy, but I mean you've you've done the requisite things to to you know you've done the hardest stuff to have a competitive team. Why don't you go for it? Why don't you you know try to contend? I mean, once you get in, who the heck knows? And especially with the top three at that rotation, I really like it. Drew Cagle at Cagle's Bagels asks, most underrated city you've covered sports in, best sports atmosphere at a game you've been to. You know what is a criminally underrated city for uh, visiting sports writers is Columbus. Uh, we overlook it because it's so close or whatever. I mean, if you want to talk about, obviously this is there for hockey, but I mean, it's a good building, good building to work in. But aside from that, the area around the arena is fantastic. You can eat at like 15 different places nice and close that are like it's affordable it's fun i am i am a big columbus fan um another one that i i tend to take some crap for is st louis on the baseball circuit i really like st louis it's got everything that i need you know i'm looking for a direct flight in somewhere to stay close restaurants around the ballpark i don't venture out too far certainly but i like what i have around the ballpark and it's a great baseball city so um i i would say that best sports atmosphere i was not at the 13 wild card game so i i can't say that um i get this is a generic answer I, I i would like to give something more interesting but the 17 cup final the penguins i don't i don't know how i can not say that um it's hard to hard to beat something like that and you're walking around on the ice just something i will never ever forget um what else do we got here <sighs> i enjoy this by the way this is this is good. Uh, Brady Randall at Brady Randall. What would worst case scenario be from Charrington's perspective if they cut to Les and experimented instead with Liam Gorski or another internal candidate? Why do you believe the GM uh, thinks that to Les warrants all this patience? I said it a little bit earlier and I, I'll emphasize again. Contract. Three point two million bucks. I think they want to try to salvage this. It all, it, it, you know, if at all. Um that being said, I think this warrants a larger discussion. How's Telez going to find himself if he doesn't play? And I mean, maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they're going to give him a lot of playing time in Toronto and hope something clicks. Um, I I've said before, and I've taken heat for this, and that's fine, that I do think Rowdy's a, like, there's a good player in there. Whether it comes out with the Pirates or not, I have some doubts whether it's going to come out, come out with the Pirates. I think if he, you know, if they would DFA him, he'll ultimately wind up a free agent somebody will probably sign him to a league minimum deal for the rest of the year, get a fresh start. If that opportunity affords him playing time, it wouldn't shock me at all if he winds up finding it. But I don't know if it's going to happen here just because of the playing time available, what has happened, um, the fact that he can't bat you know, without getting booed, which I understand why fans react. I'm not saying they shouldn't. Um, it hasn't been good enough for, for a very long time. Um, so I'm not, I'm not criticizing that. I just don't see how it turns around here. And I think they're just in a weird scenario where the GM is accountable for a $3.2 million contract. He wants to try to get this turn around, but they have to be very careful and, and choosy in where they play him. And that's not helping the player. So we can go round and round and they can play him once or twice a week. I just, you know, keep and, and say that they didn't DFA him, but I'm not sure what that does. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe Charrington needs told that he's allowed to do it. I'm not sure, but I it is. Um, I'll say it this way: it's it, it's curious, and I don't quite know what they're doing. I think a lot of you probably fall into that category, so it's a little tough to answer. But anyway, all right, let's move on. Um, Cinnamon Seven. Any thoughts on Dead and Company at the Sphere and crazy ticket prices? Jerry isn't coming out for the second set, is he? Quick Grateful Dead. Um, detour but um, no jerry isn't coming out for the second set um if any of you have seen the shows at the sphere not necessarily dead and company but excuse me fish and you too as well i i had some doubts and then seeing the visuals and what that whole experience is like i'm i'd pay darn near anything to see that at this point um at least ticket wise i have no desire to go to vegas i do not like las vegas one bit um, I've taken some criticism for that as well. Uh, but the shows themselves, I've been looking them up on YouTube and watching what I can. They've been spectacular. I'm jealous about that. Uh, another question. Don't want to dwell on that too much. At uh, DRG Jr. at Grafsky asks, a good one, 
why don't they split up Skeens and Jones, same style on consecutive days? I've wondered that too, um, especially with Bailey Falter right there. You can flip them out. The one thing I, I think you could maybe consider with that, um, they're the same style, yes, but not totally. Um, they're way different body builds, so it's different arm angles. With Jones, you're most worried about the slider. With Skeens at this point, you're most worried about the splinker. So, I mean, what they have in common is that they're hard-throwing right-handers, but they're very different hard-throwing right-handers. I can understand both cases. Um, you might not want to disrupt the routine and what these guys have, um, but uh, it were it me, I would try to look for fault, uh, a way to put Falter in there. I think that could benefit Falter. I think that could benefit all of these guys, just to break it up a little bit. And I'm kind of surprised with off days and such. They haven't done that. Um, you get the off day with the, like they were off Monday, the, the no rain, rain out Tuesday, um, off yesterday. Very, very strange. Uh, Nick, Camus Nick Camuso at NPC210 asks, what will it take for the Pirates front office to show some urgency and improve the team around the top three starting pitchers? The trade deadline, if they're in the wild card hunt this winter, it would be incredibly disappointing to sign more one-year free agent deals and not sing, swing a trade for offense with this kind of rotation. Hey, man, I understand. I understand. It's completely fair criticism. Um, if they're if they're in it, um, you know, legitimately in it, I don't know, three, four games, whatever you want to define. I think we, we know when we get there. I do think they will. I do think they will show some urgency. I think right now it's May 31st and you're not seeing a bunch of teams load up. Um, I understand the negativity or frustration or whatever surrounding the Pirates because of what's been done to this point. I'm not going to try to talk anybody off of that ledge, but like it is still somewhat early. Um, I was saying earlier, I think the best thing they can do, honestly, is see where they have the most targeted need. Is it first base and you're playing Connor Joe somewhere else? Is it third base because Key Bryan can't get healthy? Is it the outfield because, you know, Michael A. Taylor is not giving you anything? G1 Bay flopped and maybe you need a center field. I just don't know. I don't know. If they can keep getting offense from some form, and, and again, it might be the bullpen too. They might be best, best served to do something, you know, to get it, an actual setup guy if Chapman isn't giving them what they should. I mean, that, that would be frustrating that you spend $10.5 million this offseason and you don't get what you paid for. But if you're looking at, you know, wipe that clean or, or say the ultimate goal should be the wild card, then you need to go out and get the piece that you need. And that might be the piece that they need. They might have multiple pieces. But my argument was is just that you, you need to wait a little bit more, see more of what you have. There could be injuries. I certainly hope not. But I just think you need to try to stay patient a little bit. They've been playing better. Um, but I understand the want to see urgency. I think I think people kind of take them hanging on to Rowdy Telez. Um, and I understand why. I'm not I'm not saying people are wrong. I'm just saying this is their actions and, and what they create. Like you hang on to Rowdy Telez and, and you allow poor performance to sustain. Um, and people think that you're not showing urgency, which is fair. Like, you know, every move that they make should be done with the idea of going to the postseason. And it's hard to understand why you keep a first baseman around who's hitting 175 or something, and, and you're saying there's urgency. Like, no, no, there's not. I mean, I understand it from the Pirates' perspective and from the players' perspective that you're looking at the long game. I understand it from the fans' perspective that you're saying, what the heck is happening? So anyway, I guess I'm kind of the middleman of saying you just need to have a little bit of patience there. Um, but I do think that if, if they're in contention, like the point is to win, they need to win, they know they need to win, that they will do something to show the requisite urgency. All right. So I think that's it for this week. I went over again. I am sorry. Uh, hopefully it was not too much of an inconvenience, but thank you guys so much for watching this each and every day. Going to take a break for the weekend. I'll be back here on Monday. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can get all of this content and from our other Post-Gazette writers. And yep, talk to you next week. Thank you for checking out this content from Post-Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post-Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.